By this point in the quarantine, you've probably binged your way through The Office for the 20th time, gotten hooked on the never-ending train wreck of Ozark, and found yourself absolutely repulsed by Tiger King, but also can't look away. You stuck with the familiar, the sensational, and the outright bizarre, and that was a fun escape for a while. But now you're looking for something a bit deeper. Maybe something that will make you think. Something that will move your heart. Something that will turn your world upside down with beauty and wonder. In other words, maybe what you're looking for now is a film about faith. But I don't mean poorly acted, low-budget films that are just sermons put to actions meant to overwhelm you with sentimentality. I'm talking about proper cinema. Art produced by the best in the business, with award-winning acting, cinematography, writing, the whole works while also being Catholic to its core. In no apparent order, except that I've kept my favorite for last, here are five Catholic films that I think everyone should see. What do you get when you convert a Pulitzer Prize and Tony Award-winning play into a movie, getting Meryl Streep, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Amy Adams, and Viola Davis to star in it? You get one heck of a movie, that's what you get. Set in the 1960s, a time when church and society were experiencing tremendous upheaval, the central conflict of the 2008 movie Doubt arises when two characters with fundamentally different approaches are forced to lead together a changing church. The religious sister is rigid in tradition, skeptical of change and wants everything to have its place. She bemoans the diminishment of handwriting due to ballpoint pens and is forever shutting windows, an obvious response to Vatican II, a council called by Pope John XXIII because, as he said, the church needed to open the windows and let in the fresh air. The priest, on the other hand, is loose and familiar in relationships, embraces change, and is open to what the world can offer. He suggests that the Christmas pageant include some secular songs because they would be fun and plays basketball with the students. It's against this backdrop that the plot of the movie is presented. A young boy is caught leaving the rectory with the smell of alcohol on his breath. The priest claims that he was admonishing the boy privately so as to show mercy and protection. The sister definitively accuses him of abuse. Neither have evidence to prove their cases, and so a battle is waged. You have the slightest proof of anything! But I have my certainty! And on with that, I'll go to your last parish! And the one before that. If necessary, I'll find a parent. Trust me, Father Flynn, I will. At the heart of it, doubt is a parable about the role of uncertainty in life, of how to approach our relationship with God, the church, and a changing world when the facts are not lined up nice and neatly for us. Incredible cast, powerful reflection, major thumbs up from me. Spiritual journeys rarely come when they're convenient and never go according to plan. Just ask Martin Sheen's character in the 2011 movie, The Way. A successful doctor with a conventional life, it's clear that he doesn't see eye to eye with his son, a grown man with little ambition other than to travel. Driving him to the airport for his son's next excursion, he lectures him on getting a real job and making something of his life. We agreed that if I let you take me to the airport, you wouldn't lecture me about how I'm ruining my life. I lied. Days later, he receives a call from the Spanish embassy. His son died while hiking. Forced to disrupt his precious schedule, he hastily travels to Spain with the intention of collecting his son's remains and immediately returning home. Only, once he arrives, he has a change of heart. Filled with grief, anger, and regret, he decides to finish what his son started, carrying his ashes as a pilgrim along the ancient Camino de Santiago, the Way of St. James. Seeking only to get to the destination, he stands in contrast to fellow travelers and tries to avoid them, for he's but a lapsed Catholic seeking no spiritual enlightenment. But something changes along the way. As he continues on with them, often against his will, they grow together and he grows closer to his son. The Way is a touching movie about grief and reconciliation, one that captures the inherent power of a pilgrimage. You may set out on a journey simply hoping to get to a destination, but you may not end up the same person when you get there. Inspiring, family-friendly, and packed full of wonderlust, it's a great film for people of all ages and levels of faith. What would you do if religious fanatics moved into your neighborhood and began causing trouble? What if they barged into your house with guns and threatened to kill you? Most would probably get out of town, but most do not have the sense of brotherhood of the Algerian monks in the French movie of Gods and Men. When you make a vow to religious life, really commit yourself to Christian life, you leave behind your own sense of want and begin to prioritize many things above your own safety. The Trappist of the Abbey of Our Lady of Atlas knew this, and when they forgot, they had their brothers to remind them. For years, they lived peacefully in Algeria despite it being a majority Muslim country. 
The monks do not proselytize their neighbors, but they also don't hide their faith either, providing spiritual and physical support to their impoverished city. The Muslims respect them, and they show great love to the Muslims. Faith and brotherhood are easy when things go well. But as a civil war begins to develop, it becomes clear that the government that had assured their safety is quickly losing its grip, and the appearance of extremists raises the alarm for some of the monks. It's time to get out of the country. But others disagree. There is discord among the monks, and they begin to forget who they are. Grounding themselves in prayer, letting their superficial desires fade away, and committing to one another, they decide, all together, to stay, even if it might kill them, to be in solidarity with one another, but also to be in solidarity with those in the city. The screenplay is based on a true story and is the winner of the 2010 Cannes Film Festival's second highest honor. Beautifully shot and thoughtful, it uses simplicity and silence to force the audience to grapple with the profound questions it asks. Fitting for a Trappist film, there is no CGI, no special effects, just the raw beauty of a brotherhood of faith on display. Keeping the seal of the confessional can be one of the most difficult crosses to bear for a priest, but no amount of training could have prepared Father James for what he heard in the opening scene of the movie, Calvary. I'm going to kill you, Father. Certainly a startling opening line. Abused by a priest as a child, the penitent makes his promise precisely because he knows that the priest is a good and faithful man. Just as he had his life taken away from him as an innocent boy, so too would the priest, innocent to these crimes, have to die. Only, he would give the priest a week to prepare. And so the priest begins, like Christ, on his walk to Calvary, prepared to sacrifice for his flock. Despite knowing his inevitable fate, he does nothing to protect himself and seems to care little about what will eventually happen. All the confession does is give him a greater sense of urgency to heal a church and country torn apart by sin. In scene after scene, he is confronted with disillusionment and despair in his people, a people acutely aware of the sins of the church, and their own sins, knowing no way out and so falling deeper into their vices. They mock the church and the church plays the victim. Despite the constant awareness of sin all around them, there is no sense of forgiveness, repentance, or redemption. Hope seems lost. But Father James is a good priest, and the people recognize it. It bothers them because it highlights their own sins, but he's not there to judge. Frequenting bars and shops, congregating with criminals and unrepentant hedonists, he preaches a steady message. I think there's too much talk about sins, to be honest. Not enough talk about virtues. Despite being outright gut-wrenching on multiple levels, it's refreshing to see a priest in modern cinema portrayed in such a positive light. He is humble, contrite, forgiving, and deeply committed to the mission of Christ, bringing hope even to tragedy with dark humor. For me, it is a requirement for anyone who wants to become a priest, although I'm not sure if it's the sort of movie I'll ever watch a second time. Which brings us to the final movie of the bunch, and let me tell you, it's my favorite. Not only my favorite Catholic movie, it may very well be my favorite movie of all time. Imagine this, Robert De Niro, Jeremy Irons, Liam Neeson. One part action thriller, one part story of conversion, one part journey into the mystery of an ancient world. Add in some awe-inspiring views of nature a la planet Earth, award-winning cinematography, and a soundtrack by Ennio Morricone that will simultaneously fill you with inspiration and sadness, and what you get is the 1986 British film, winner of the Cannes Film Festival's highest honor, The Mission. Set in 1750s South America, the movie tells the real-life struggle of Jesuit missionaries building settlements in rural jungles, making first contact with a skeptical, dangerous tribe. Without the language to communicate, the first missionary uses his oboe to draw the people out with beauty and awe, eventually befriending them after much patience. And as if this weren't heroic and impossible enough, the Jesuits must compete with the Portuguese and Spanish empires who have their own interest in the people, namely to enslave them and steal their land. And what do they run from? They run from us. That is, they run from slavery. Slavery rubbish. It is well known. Rubbish! Rubbish! Your eminence! Your eminence! Rubbish! Rubbish! Hope is given to the mission when one of the mercenaries, after one of the most poignant portrayals of conversion and forgiveness, becomes a Jesuit seeking to protect the people he once terrorized. Unfortunately, he's alone in his conversion, and the Jesuits find themselves with a dilemma. Up against two powerful nations that threaten to expel the priests from their countries, they must choose between abandoning their people, defending them with arms, or dying alongside them in peace. Honestly, it's hard to say what specifically I love so much about this movie. 
The aesthetic is obviously breathtaking, and I could listen to that soundtrack on repeat for hours. But there's something about the simplicity of the missionary attitude that speaks to my heart. It's the sort of feeling that I get when watching Into the Wild, only instead of a pretentious know-it-all who doesn't know how to love or to be vulnerable, we get Christ-centered men who are willing to travel halfway around the world on ships and on foot to a country barely on the map to announce Jesus Christ to people who have never heard his name. I sit here today having absolutely no interest in becoming a missionary. And yet, there is something about this movie that tells me that that's all I want. To get rid of everything but a small bag of possessions. To live off the land. To make everything I do about the glory of God and the evangelization of peoples. I find myself sitting in awe of what our ancestors in faith did before us, the great lengths that they went to spread the gospel, and it makes me want to do something heroic as well. Why don't I have that sort of missionary zeal right here and now? Why don't I go to people in my own area and give my life for them? There's nostalgia for the past, sure, but what's to stop us from reaching the frontier of our own day? I tell you, if you watch one movie on this list, watch The Mission. It will change your life. But you know what? Maybe they won't. These movies spoke to me, but as you can see, they're all of a particular style. There are no saint movies on this list, no biblical recreations, nothing before the 1980s. There are definitely some good ones out there, and maybe that's what's touched you in a profound way. I hope you liked this list and find fruit in it, but before you go, leave a comment with your favorite Catholic movies and what you like about them.